Hey, one of the bad areas on these tripods is always this rear package tray, right at the C-pillar and where the fender meets, right by the trunk. Tell you what, if you want to see how to repair all this in one shot, it's a long video, but it's worth it, so stay tuned. Welcome to Restoring Christine, where we're restoring a 1956 Chevrolet Bel Air, all do-it-yourself at my home garage. This episode today is going to be on the repair of the rear package tray, um, where the rear glass trails into the, to the trunk area, the rear quarter panel. This whole area is kind of gnarly and somebody's repaired it in the past and it's got some nastiness up in here, I'll show you in a second. Uh, but the rear package tray back here is, is corroded. There's a, a trough that goes all the way around. It's a, it's a gutter where if the window ever leaked, if the glass ever leaked, it was supposed to go in a trough and there's a, there's a drain port and a drain port on both sides and they go down and they, they, they uh, allow the water to get out from the interior of the car. But I guess, I'm assuming since it's rusted on this Bel Air, it's probably rusted on just about every other Tri-5 out there. So I've already repaired the passenger side and now I'm gonna work on the driver's side. So that's what our project today is gonna to be. Okay, so what are we dealing with? This is the driver's side C pillar, rear quarter, package tray, and the gutters underneath here. So you can see I'm dealing with an old patch that somebody put in many years ago, I'm guessing maybe in the 1980s or so, and this is a pretty gnarly patch. Now, this is all going to be underneath body filler. It's also going to be underneath stainless steel for most of it. So it's not really critical that I replace any of this and make this. This is not going to be a metal finish. So as long as this is solid, then this would be okay. But uh, you can see in the, the area where the glass, glass seats, this flange where the, the, the gasket rests is all corroded. It's, it's not in great shape here. It's got some corrosion down here with the original body seam. This is original lead right here, this seam here. Uh, the pinch weld here is, it's kind of, it's been, I guess, made up in here. But they didn't do anything with the package tray. On the other side, I did this some number of months ago when I was doing the, um, the, the passenger side seat pillar. So there's two, two videos out there. Um, I don't remember the numbers. I think there may be seven and eight or eight and nine, something like that. Uh, but I did this C-pillar repair, and I did this in multiple pieces. I did the, the, the quarter panel was in one piece. This C-pillar was in one piece up this way. I made another piece here, spliced them, uh, spliced it along this bead. But this was more of a, an issue with the C-pillar, and it just so happened to also involve the rear package tray. So I repaired the rear package tray, and I wish there wasn't so much of a shadow. You can see what was done, but I built this gutter. Um, I got this together. So all that came out really, really nice. <clears throat> so I'm going to do the same thing on this side, except I got a different issue. I'm not really, my C pillar is not that bad. Now I didn't, do, I did this off video some couple of months ago. I did this repair of the upper area of the, the roof and the C pillar and, and the rain gutter. Um, I didn't make a video of this, but I did repair this, um, some number of months ago. And now I'm going to get down here. This C pillar is not nearly as bad as the other C-pillar was, but this area of the package tray is probably just as bad as the other side. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do today. Uh, let's see what it's gonna to take to do it. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by making some tape templates. Um, on the other side, I used a, a cereal box, just like cardboard to make this out, but I think tape might be a better way to go. So I've been having a lot of luck with that, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make a tape template for this to kind of figure out what size I'm dealing with and also this compound curve because it's a spiral. You know, it's, it's, it's flat and it dives like this and then this one kind of comes flat and comes over. So in order to make this, we've got to weld two pieces together. Um, so once I, once I get that shape figured out, get this done, I think, um, I think this won't take too, too long. It's a lot of fiddly stuff, but we can, we can get it done. So I'm going to start with that. All right, so I took a whole bunch of layers of tape and then put them all in this groove and then I used my utility knife to shave the edge and both corners and then I took a Sharpie 
to trace where the, the inside corner is because once you peel this off, it's going to lose its shape. So really all I want to do is I just really want to find where this seam is, but I need to know, I need to know what angle both of these are coming off at. So I think, I think I'll be able to take this and put this on a piece of sheet metal, trace it out, and then cut it out. Um, but I'm going to leave this long and that long and just splice it in the middle and start making this, this tray. So here's the deal. This is a curly little piece, but what you're looking for is you're looking to see what this curve is in a plane. So if I take this and I lay this kind of flat, I mean, I know the fender is kind of curvy, but you can see once you lay this piece of tape flat, it's going to define exactly what that spiral is. So I know if I cut this and I weld two pieces together, the only way they'll be able to, this piece and that piece will be able to weld together is along that, that curvilinear spiral. All right, so check it out. Flat piece, flat piece, that's the same edge that was on the, on the car. And you see how these two curves are just drastically different? They don't align on a flat plane. Why? Because they need to be bent in that spiral and then this line will, will align. So we're gonna put that in a car. There's the proof. So I've got this piece clamped and you see that spiral follows right along the inside seam. And I have this piece now curved and this piece, it took a little bit of grinding to, to get it to fit in, but now it's very close. Got a little bit of a gap here I need to fix, but it's getting it's getting a lot closer, and I think I just need to grind a little bit off of this edge, and I'll be able to get it to fit in. But then I'm going to do that. I'm gonna, then I'm going to tack weld this, and then uh, pull it off and then weld it completely. shape. See, that wasn't too bad. You just, you know, take your time with it. In little pieces. Once you get used to welding sheet metal, and believe me, it took a little while to get used to welding sheet metal. I know this piece is still hot, but there it is. You know, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it and I'm going to weld the backside so that I got a solid weld, but I'm pretty pleased with that. I mean, look at that. I mean, that fits right in. So now once I grind the top, cut the top, cut the outside edge, that's basically it for that piece, and then I can get rid of I can get rid of this and start building some of this other stuff into it. Now that you see it's fully welded up, both sides, inside and outside, now I need to let that cool off so it can handle it. And then uh, I'll take it to the bench and I'll grind the inside and the outside. with it if you take anything away from this video I mean even just <laughs> just this a little bit I mean but you see the corkscrew spiral see the shape so you don't have to guess at where it is I mean just let the let the car tell you where it is and there it is so let's go see where it how it fits like a champ there's some marks uh, just put two marks there where this where this was supposed to land and there it is. So, it's one piece. Done. Keep going. Back on the car. Now I'm thinking about my next step. So I've got the flange already made. The window sill. Um, so now I'm going to start thinking about what I'm going to do with this. And then I also need to start thinking about the package tray. So right now what I've decided I'm going to do is I've got a lot of, a lot of garbage in here. And if I'm going to do this, I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm going to do it all. So I'm going to 
cut a face piece for the A pillar from where, I don't know if you can see the, the weld is underneath here. So I'm gonna come back to about here, get in a good metal, put me another piece that'll come down about here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna trace that all the way around. Then the actual top side of the fender, I'm gonna make a piece like this. So I'm gonna have to curve, I have to put a little bit of a curve in it. It's kind of got a sweep in here, but that's not too bad. So we'll get that done. Tell you what, I got to rolling on fabricating a few, pe few of these pieces and I got ahead of the video. So sorry about that, but. I made a tape, <clears throat> tape template on the top of the fender and I cut out this piece and put a little bit of a wave in it to, to match the wave that we have here. And I took the same tape and the tape that I ran here and it ran up, traced a line in here and then I split it. So I said, all right, well, I'm do this piece and then I'm gonna do the fender piece. So now I've got all this fitting together. All of this is fitting together now. Let's see how it's gonna come together. Uh, I gotta work this a little bit, but that's, that's small potatoes. Getting it fit up now. So you can see I've got it in position. Got the fender fender patch on top. I've got the extension of the C pillar on. I've got a tack welded, a tack welded to the to the body, tack welded to these two parts together. This is still uh, this window flange is still still loose. I did trim it though. So now this is trimmed to its approximate final dimension, but I still need to grind it against this. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, now that I've got this, I'm going to go ahead and at least get these two pieces attached. And then I'll, I'll be start trying to get these two um, fitted together. But I don't know at what point I'm going to stop what I'm doing here and get on a package tray because the package tray has almost as much, if not more fabrication to do this little gutter. that what do you think looks good it's got good lines it's got good curves it's smooth weld came out nice in the pocket it's really good to grind it out I might uh, add some more weld to the back side I have to see it once I pop this free because right now she's sitting on top of the fender so I need to make my mind as far as when I want to tackle a package tray how much of this I want to cut out do I want to put the fender on first and then cut out the window flange and then work the package tray and then the window flange last there's a lot of decisions that I need to make right now to to figure out how I'm gonna how I'm gonna tackle this all right so I cut my tack welds free and I pull a piece off and you can see what the weld looks like on the back side so that's just without putting anything on the back and it's pretty good it's not full penetration I'd like it to be a little bit better than that but I'm also concerned about potentially warping the piece. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this out. I think I'm going to cut this out and start fitting that in. And then I'll leave. That, what that'll do is that'll define this line and leave that in place. Then, once I get that in place, then I can cut the window, let the window uh, flange out and then get at this back side of this package tray and do that. I got it cut out. There's a bit of corrosion back in the trunk. That's way up high. I don't know how I'm gonna get that. It's behind the trunk hinge. So I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I might just leave it to be honest with you because there's no clean way to get to it. Um, it's just a shame. So I got it cut out. I've got this fitting in very nicely. I'm trying to do this with one hand. But anyway, it's gonna go in there really, really well. Um, this picks up. I mean, it's just sitting in there. So what I'll do is I'll I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and fit this in, tack it, and then I'll be able to cut out the window flange area, and then work the package. Tray.
completely fitted in. I just have a little bit left over here to trim in, but I'm gonna start working on this package tray, but that that is gonna come out really nice. I'm very pleased with that. Extremely pleased. In fact, that came out, I have to admit, that came out a lot better than I thought it would. <laughs> Now I'm inside the car, you can see the package tray in the gutter and you can see a big hole in the gutter back here. Uh, it goes all the way, shoot, it goes all the way to about here. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to get to all of that. It's just um, rough. So I'm definitely gonna take care of this corner. But the package tray itself, uh, the other side is the same way. The trunk lid bracket, is underneath here and that gets in the way of, of um, this where it's it makes this more structural than than you would think so I'm gonna work on fabricating something for this and it's gonna have to tie into my new window lip all right this is what I decided to do I am gonna go for it I'm gonna cut out this all the way here along here and back to here and I'm, I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna make this away from the car I'm gonna to try to replicate this piece so I'm gonna to try to keep this all intact I'm gonna to try to rip this right underneath the window ledge and that way I'll have something to, to, to aim for all right now we're ready to make the gutter go on the outside of this and I know from making the previous one on the other side that it's really difficult to do but what I'm gonna do is I've take I've taken a piece of tape okay and I don't know if you can see it but I know that this angle is tight here and then it slopes off that way so what I've done is I have put the tape and I've pulled it to where this tape is basically defining a plane that spirals so when I cut this tape off and I and I lay this strip on a piece of sheet metal it's gonna define a spiral that is gonna give me that curve so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can't figure out a way to make the other side that comes up to meet that meets the trunk so now let me show you what I was talking about so I've got my package straight piece this is how it's supposed to fit but I'm gonna turn it upside down because the gutter goes down so watch Turn, the, turn this over, and now here's this piece. And this, this spiral now needs to be flat. So it's gonna be flat here. It's gonna weld all along this seam, and it's gonna give it a sloped, a sloped angle. Now once I get this one on, then I'll be able to, um, to use this surface to define the other, the other flange. Sides ready to be grind, round it down, grind it around. It's hot. It's very hot. That's a lot of weld. So, again, I think you've seen this before. It's gorilla, it's on both sides. I'm not worried about the underside, nobody will ever see that. In fact, nobody's ever gonna see the top side, but I'm gonna go ahead and grind that uh, flush and smooth. And then we can go ahead and try to fit in the next flange piece that comes back up this way. All right, I'm starting to run out of daylight, but um, so my this might be it for today. But you can see how it's fitting in. Looking pretty good. Need to bend that down a little, tipped up with the welding heat. But that's the, the tray, and you can see the start of the gutter. So now I'm gonna get 
tomorrow I'll get the other piece that comes up, fit that in, then I'll be able to weld, weld the rear glass flange and weld in this quarter panel into the bottom of the C-pillar, and then we ought to be rocking and rolling and done. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Good morning, I'm back at it again today and tell you what, I started stringing together that video last night and it's getting to be really long so I think what I'm going to have to do today in order to save time is just to do a lot of time lapse. So let me just explain what I'm going to do, um, my plan at least, and then hopefully I'll be able to get some time lapse and that way we can shorten this thing and get it down to the end. So I just, I just don't know how, how much time you guys are willing to invest in watching one of my videos and I'm, I'm just a little sensitive to it so let me just explain what I've got going on. <clears throat> So I think what I'm going to do is this package tray, I'm going to tack weld it in. And I know that the this half of the gutter needs to splice in underneath this pinch, pinch weld. So what I'm going to do is I've already got part of the pinch weld here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish welding this in. I'm going to fit this, cut it out so that I can get this in the right location. I'm going to tack weld this in place. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little flange that goes underneath here to tie into this. And in between, if I lock that flange, this pinch weld, and this together, pull it off the car, then I can fabricate the piece and that'll tell me what this piece looks like underneath that I can't see. So that's my plan and that's where we're going. So hang on. Shot of where I'm at. I've got the pinch weld tacked in, the package tray tacked in, and now I'm gonna try to get these two locked together loosely so that I can create that piece on the bench that goes and closes this gutter. got the piece off the car and I've got the window channel locked in. I've got an extension of the pinch weld locked in. So now what I need is I need a piece that is going to fit. It's going to go along this edge and along this edge all the way around. And that's going to be the end of the gutter. So the gutter just needs to complete that all the way around from, from this corner to this edge and then I've got it in my hand I can make it let's go ahead and do that okay so I made me a template 
that goes between that fold and this edge and this edge. Now I'm going to cut a piece of sheet metal out and that's going to close the gutter. So it's going to make the back side of the gutter of the piece. So let me go ahead and bring that to the sheet metal and trace it, cut it out. And then we'll weld it. <laughs> Here it is. So, a flat piece. That's on a curve. So now you can see the gutter. One side of that gutter is pretty much flat. So that's kind of the plane that it needs to be on. We'll see. We'll get it on the uh, on the part. Go ahead and tack weld it, and we'll weld it fully. fitted in, the gutter fitted in, the glass flange is in, border panels patched. The only thing I have to do now is do the final cut in on this part, grind that down, tune this up a little bit and then work that, work that edge and then we can call this one done. Right, we're in a home stretch I've got everything uh, grinded in I haven't hit it with the flap disc yet but everything's grinded flat flush um, now the last thing I'm gonna do is just wrap it and I think 
I'm gonna try. I've got an eighth inch round bar. I'm gonna put an eighth inch round bar right inside of there, weld it in, and then grind against it. And that'll give me something to basically carve that shape because there's no way I'm gonna bend. You know, this is an eighth inch down and an eighth inch out. And I really almost shouldn't be bothering with it, but I'm going to do it anyway. So that's what I'm gonna do. That's how I'm gonna do it. I hope that it works. Please, please, please. Unfortunately, I cheated you out of a segment of video. I bent an eighth inch bar that I, I tack welded on the inside of this. And then as I was coming around here, I realized, you know what? I really need to patch this now. So I just roughed in that patch. Uh, on the tray and um, what I'll do now is I'm going to set up the time lapse go ahead and finish welding this in finish welding this in grind out that rabbit um, flap disc sand it and be done you can tell I'm a little punch drunk <laughs> it's tiring second day I'm almost done stick with me we'll get there <laughs> That's all she wrote. Got it. Whoo, man, that's exhausting. Truth of the matter is I'm rushing against the clock. I've got some <laughs> something to do, but that's okay. I got it all done. Uh, there's a few little pinholes I'll take care of. There's a little bit of additional grinding I need to do in here, but I think you get the gist. Sorry, this is going to be a long video, or it has been. All right. <laughs> I hope you like that. I mean, that was a... That was fun, actually. It was exhausting, but fun. It was rewarding because everything was working. All my ideas were, were clicking. They were gelling. They were coming together. So, man, hey, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for sticking around. Appreciate all the time you spend with me in the garage working with Christine. We're going to get it done. We're almost getting out of this metal phase. Pretty soon I'm going to lift the, the body off of the frame. I'm going to put in the, the floor pan and the trunk pan, and that ought to be a couple of good videos. So be sure to tune in for that when they do come out. But anyway... Thanks for watching. Appreciate all the thumbs up. Appreciate all the subscribers. Let's go get them. Cheers.